To continue our conversation about agricultural issues in Minnesota, I reached out to Senator Tory Westrom, the chair of the Senate Agriculture and Rural Development Committee, for his perspective on the need for farm relief and whether Minnesota is adequately managing its water resources. This summer's lack of rain has been pretty hard on farmers in many areas of the state. Crop yields will be lower in those areas. Also, the Department of Agriculture reported that the hay supply in Minnesota is at its third lowest level since 1950. What have you been hearing from farmers and producers? Well, Shannon, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about agriculture and the current uh, conditions and the drought that uh, many farmers have experienced this year as the Senate Ag Chair. Uh, we wanna uh, make sure we can do everything we can to help uh, reinforce and uh, help support our agriculture community and our farmers that do such a great job of feeding our state and uh, all of the, the country, really. Um, but the drought has been tough. Uh, we've been hearing from a lot of farmers, the livestock farmers probably the most concerned about the forage uh, and the lack thereof. Uh, the, the first crop of hay was looking real well, good, and it came in well, but uh, many farmers in August were telling me uh, that most of their uh, second crop was, was next to nothing. Third crop wasn't looking that good. Uh, fortunately, uh, so many prayers were answered with some good rains coming late in August, but in a lot of cases that was too little too late, uh, especially for the crop farmers. But um, livestock and the forage concerns of getting through winter, uh, many were able to make it through this fall, but I grew up on a farm, a dairy farm myself, and I know how important that forage is to have enough in the shed or in the haylage pile to uh, make it through the winter months. And that's the concern uh, that right. they have to get in from so far away. So to that end, Governor Walls has proposed $10 million in aid to farmers. $5 million would be in rapid response grants, particularly for livestock producers and specialty crop producers. And then $5 million in zero interest loans through the Rural Finance Authority. What are your thoughts on this proposal? Well, uh, we have been talking with the Ag Commissioner and uh, the Governor's Office on this proposal, uh, talking with many farm groups, and uh, we are open to this proposal, open to the idea of giving some one-time uh, uh, rapid assistance to farmers that are affected. And uh, many, many uh, of us are talking about the target and need for targeting it towards the livestock industry mostly in agriculture. Uh, crop insurance, for example, has a, a, a crop farmers, excuse me, have an opportunity to have crop insurance, which gives them a safety net and uh, a pre prevention against some of these uh, unforeseen uh, weather circumstances where livestock farmers and forage, the forage they raise is not able to be covered by crop insurance or uh, specialty farmers. And so, uh, we're trying to look at the best ways to get this out. So I think it's a good starting point. Uh, we are looking at maybe property tax rebates as, as well or in addition or right. instead. Uh, in the and, I, and I did so, want to ask you about that. What, what's the idea behind the property tax rebate? And then for those farmers that rent land, because land is very expensive, would they not be eligible for that? Well, we would, we would want to help the farmer because they're the ones actively engaged in this uh, business. Uh, they have the risk. They have the fixed expenses. Uh, to, to cover in their operation. Uh, if they're renting some of their uh, pasture land or, or land, uh, they are paying it through rent because rents uh, reflect all the costs for the landowner. So we are working through some of those details, but uh, we have a history 20 years ago uh, with, under Governor Ventura, we did a property tax rebate for farmers. It would be a quicker way to uh, get some of the dollars out and maybe just a a uh, fixed percentage off of property taxes up to say $5,000 or some fixed amount, maybe uh, eight or $10 an acre uh, on the first uh, three or 500 acres. Uh, those are just some ideas that we're talking about, trying to work through uh, these ideas and uh, we could get them out quicker. The property taxes are a fixed cost that all farmers, uh, livestock farmers as well would have in their operation. And uh, if we could get them a a one-time supplement drought aid check for that. It could help cover some of these costs of property taxes or the higher cost of bringing in forage, hay from out of state. Um, I was 
I was at a meeting this morning in Alexandria at an ag business uh, meeting uh, at the Alec Tech they put on every year. Uh, they were talking about uh, many farmers having to look at Southern Iowa, Missouri, and uh, that far out for bringing in forage. And that's, that's quite expensive, $100 a ton or, or, or more. So it certainly seems like the governor and lawmakers are interested in an aid package for farmers. Uh, if there is a special session, are you hopeful? I, I am. I think uh, there's, there's an opportunity to help uh, those farmers that have been hit the hardest by the drought and uh, those counties in our state, especially those with livestock and that don't have other insurance options to uh, cover that, that risk that they've been hit with. Um, uh, again, we are, we are very thankful. Uh, the prayers have been answered with the rains that we've recently had, but uh, we have a lot of, lot of moisture to replenish in the soil. Um, ironically, uh, another positive side of this, uh, the breakfast I was, ag breakfast I was at this morning, uh, uh, some of the farm business manager, managers that were presenting were uh, pleasantly surprised with some of the yields that beans and uh, corn have been bringing in in certain areas. So this is very uh, spotty throughout the state and uh, soil conditions is a, is a big part of it. Uh, again, it looked like uh, the forage is, is probably one of the biggest concerns that we need to deal with for our livestock producers. So they can get through the winter and not have to sell off their livestock uh, herds, uh, which they spend many years trying to build up those genetics and those herds so they can sustain and have a, uh, a herd big enough to support their family and maybe their, their uh, sons and daughters who wanna farm with them. I'd like to zoom out just a little bit to a broader question about water in the state of Minnesota. Minnesota Public Radio reported this summer that the drought had caused some wells to dry up. Certainly rivers, streams, and lakes are lower, but I wonder what your assessment is of how Minnesota is doing in managing aquifers and other water resources, particularly in light of the shortage of water that we had over this summer. Well, it's always uh, a concern uh, that we have uh, adequate water resources. Uh, the aquifers are a great a natural resource that our farmers can tap. Um, sometimes I think we uh, try to legislate or, or regulate from the extremes and uh, using the drought conditions of this year uh, aren't probably a good ba uh, base to uh, work off of. Just like two years ago, uh, when we had so much water, uh, we had a local river uh, in my home county that uh, was just running running wild. They couldn't even get a road project finished because they couldn't slow the, the water down enough that where this year the river was just about dry. And so uh, nature is fickle. It does uh, ebb and flow. And so we don't want to react or overreact. Uh, uh, but it has shown us how important our aquifers are. Uh, in some cases, uh, many farmers are, are having are struggling, working and getting through the permit process that's gotten uh, quite burdensome. So uh, that's the other concern that I have is that uh, many farmers could have weathered this storm or this drought, if you will, uh, a little better if we would have been able to make it possible for them to have irrigation on their farm. And in the areas where there's concern about the aquifers going down too far or going dry, uh, there has been prorated use in those areas. And, and I think we've got a pretty good balance of, of uh, making sure that there's um, limited use when the aquifers are going down. In many cases, they put test wells in uh, alongside the, the irrigation well. Uh, but you know, Mother Nature recharges those very fast in most cases. And so uh, I think it's uh, put an exclamation point on how important irrigation is to our farmers and the specialty crops that many of them raise uh, because of irrigation. So we wanna have a, a good environment, uh, regulatory environment to allow irrigation and uh, but also watch out that those aquifers uh, can stay healthy and uh, you know more rain recharges them quickly. Senator Tory Westrom, thank you so much. Thank you.